to the video. In this video I'll be trying out the Canson Heritage 100% cotton uh, hot pressed watercolor paper. <laughs> it's a mouthful. And I have it right here. And I'm so excited to try it out. It's gonna be my first time with this paper. And it's also going to be my first time trying out hot pressed watercolor paper. Normally I use cold pressed watercolor page paper which has a bit more texture than this. So I'm excited to try this new type of paper. And also it's my first time trying 100% cotton paper. So uh, cotton paper should be able to take more layers and keep wet longer. So I'm excited to feel how that impacts my workflow. Actually I was going to get Arches watercolor paper but that was just rather a bit more expensive than this so I caved and I thought well why not try this I haven't even tried 100% cotton paper before so I think this will be a big upgrade nevertheless. This is gonna be a more first impressions and what I think of this paper so take everything I say with a grain of salt it's only my opinion and it might not match your opinion when you try the paper so just know that you know, take what I say with a grain of salt and make your own uh, decisions. So, the video is going to go like this, just to give you an overview. First I'm going to cut up the paper to make two sheets. I'm going to make a test sheet where I'm going to test uh, some different techniques just to see and feel out the paper and see if I can feel any difference from the paper that I normally use. So I'm going to make a test sheet where I'm going to test wet on wet techniques, wet on dry technique, uh, if, the if the paint can lift from the paper, and um, a gradient that goes from a color to the paper, and a gradient that goes from a color to another color, just to see how smoothly I can get the colors to mix on the paper. And I'm really excited to see how this paper reacts. After that, uh, with the other piece of paper, I'm going to make a small painting um, and we'll see how well that goes. <laughs> Just to see how uh, you know this paper impacts my workflow and if I like it at all or not. My thoughts on the paper will be you know, spread throughout the video as I do the things, but I'm going to try and remember to take notes so that I can summarize at the end if you just want you know, my... Um, my opinion on the paper. Um, so I think I'm going to try to make chapters in this video so that you can find timestamps time in the descriptions that will tell you when I do what in this video. So you can skip to what you'd like to see it at any time. I'm going to try to remember to do that. So um, yeah, so first things first, let's start by preparing the paper for the two sheets that I'm going to make. I can't wait to get started and I hope you will um, you'll stay and watch me figure out this paper. So let's get started. Yay! <laughs> I'm so awkward, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm going to prepare the paper. First we're gonna take off the protective sheet that is on here. As you can see this is a watercolor block. It is uh, gummed with some gum on the sides so that it won't buckle when you paint on it if you just paint on it on the block itself. But I'm going to take the paper out because I want to cut it up and I'm not confident enough to make an A3 painting right off the bat when it's my first time trying this paper. So I'm going to first take off the protective sheet. I really hope I can do this without ruining anything. So I'm doing as it says on the instructions. Um, carefully taking off the paper. Ooh, I'm so excited! Okay, we're gonna see the actual paper. Da, 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 da. Oh, there's a uh, something on it. Huh? Can 
this here. There's a little um, something. Well, let me see if I can show you right there. Hmm. And it's in the paper, so I can't really remove it. So I'm thinking I'm going to make it so that the test sheet uh, gets that little mistake there. Okay, so I'm going to cut the paper out so that I can make the sheets. So, um, let's do this. There we go. I'm just gonna put this block away so I don't accidentally do anything to it. Okay, here is the paper and let's do the wobble test. <laughs> it sounds really good. It's actually pretty thin compared to what I was thinking. I'm just gonna take a look if it says how many GSM it is. Okay, it is 300 GSM, but I just find that it feels thinner than that. But it sounds good. Okay. So I'm going to take my ruler and my pencil and I'm gonna make it ready to cut this paper up. So let's see. This is going to be our test sheet and this is going to be the little painting. So I'm going to tape these onto some wood so they don't buckle too much. I'm just going to use this tape because that's what I usually do. Ready and taped. There. Now they're both ready. So I'm going to draw some boxes on this one for the different things. test sheet is ready. Um, of course I had to make a mistake when I wrote down the stuff, but I hope you can forgive me. I'm just gonna find my paints and make ready for painting. So, just a moment. So I have gotten my tools out, my watercolor brushes, my watercolors. And I'm using the St. Petersburg White Nights watercolors, which I use for all my work, almost. Here they are. They're just gonna go over here. Some water, of course. Some paper. There, I think we have everything. So I'm gonna bring you closer to the paper so you can see a little better 
what is going on. So I hope I can keep it in frame, so excuse me if I don't. Okay. So I'm just going to use, which colors should I use? Um, I'll use indigo because it's a color that I know well because I use it so much and it's so pretty. So I'm going to use indigo from the White Knights St. Petersburg watercolors. So we're going to go wet on dry, so I'm just going to load my brush up and go in with a really wet brush on dry paper. beautiful. It's very smooth compared to cold press, you know, this is hot press paper, but cold press paper um, has a lot more texture, so this is kind of cool. I'm going to go in with a lighter version. See how that works. And I'm going to go in where I'm going to try to make it bloom and see if it can do that, so I'm going to go dark down here, and I'm going to go in with a water droplet here. Ooh, it blooms beautifully! I'm excited to see if the texture stays when it dries. So I'm just going to leave that there. Then I'm going to wet this paper. to see how it fares when you do wet on wet techniques. So I'm going to start. Um, so this paper is very wet, so I'm going to go in and just do some dots. Okay, it doesn't travel as far as it does on cold press, I think, but it's beautiful. I think I, think I kind of love this paper already. Uh, maybe it's just because it's new. Okay, so lifting, I'm just gonna make a... Um, it's so smooth. So I'm just gonna put down a much pretty amount of color. I'm gonna put a lot over here. We're gonna come back to lifting to see if I can lift it off when it's dry. Then we have the gradient to paper. This is not something that I have practiced a lot, so... Excuse me if it doesn't go so well. I'm gonna start with a dark... Dark color. And then I'm gonna add water. And keep going lighter. I'm gonna put a little bit more color and some clean water to make it go from color to to paper. That looks really promising. So let's see how it dries. Um, next one is gradient between two colors. I'm gonna use uh, indigo and carmine. So I'm gonna go in with the indigo and then I'm gonna go in with the carmine. Oops, I may have overestimated how far I could go. Going with the indigo. Ooh, it blends so smoothly. That's really nice. Okay, I'm messing around too much, sorry. Great! Let's try lifting a bit on the... Um, it's not all dry yet, but I want to see if I can lift any now. So I'm just going to try and lift over here. Ooh, it does not lift at all. 
See, I'm scrubbing the paper really roughly, actually. Okay, it lifts a little. Let's see if we get a more noticeable lift when we do it here. Okay. Yeah, that lifts it. That lifts it um, more visibly. Yeah. So it does lift when it's still damp, but. Um, I'm just gonna take my uh, blow dryer and dry this completely so that I can test whether it lifts when it's dried. Okay, so I may have moved some pigment over here when I blow dried, but um, I don't think that's gonna do much of a difference. It's still a little bit wet over here, so we'll just have to look at this area. So this is totally dry now, so I'm going to try to lift it again. So we're going to start with the light side. It doesn't lift. It doesn't really lift at all. Nope. Let's try the dark side. The dark side. I just meant, you know, this side, <gasps> with a little bit more pigment. Okay. It does lift a little, but you really have to work the paper to get it out. So I guess if I want to lift, especially this is a, such a dark color, so it might be a little bit unfair. But I guess on this paper you have to be uh, quick to lift uh, the color if that's what you want. If we look at the other um, tests here, wet on dry is um, as usual. It's really, really very flat in the, there's not much texture and it's got this beautiful border around the edge that I really like. Um, it's very very thin so it's not that noticeable but it's there and I actually pretty I like it so wet and dry is uh, it seems like it's gonna be very uh, what do you call that even it's a very even surface so it, the paint distributes very evenly then we have wet on wet on cold pressed paper you can get very clear blooms which are a texture when the paint, you know, lands in the little pockets in the paper and it makes like these darker um, things when it spreads out. It's very hard to explain, but it's really beautiful. I only see a little bit of that here. We have a little bit here and uh, otherwise it's evened out a lot, which might make it a lot easier to make um, things like skin tones and such where you really want it to be even and you don't want you know these uh, bloom blooming textures to show up lifting we already talked about a lot um, it does lift when you go in when it's still damp you can see here that it lifts pretty okay when it's damp but when it's dry it's gonna be hard to lift it and of course I used a very dark color here so that might also have something to do with it but i think that on my normal cold press paper i would be able to lift it a little bit more from the dark color then we have the gradient to paper and that went really smoothly i think a theme with this paper and of course it's like that because it's hot pressed so that there's less texture but that is that is that the pigment is just distributed very smoothly all over the paper so that's really nice and I'm looking forward to try and working with that then we have the gradient between colors and here I actually managed to make some blooms um, they're very faint but they're there and I actually I like blooms you know not always they can be a bit annoying if you accidentally make them but I usually 
make them on purpose and use them in my work. So I'm gonna miss them a bit because they're very faint on this paper. But it seems like the, word, the colors mix nicely and if this is a little bit uneven, that is my fault. I um, accidentally put in too much water, clean water, instead of having color on my uh, brush and stuff. So that's why it's a little bit uneven. Yeah, so this is the test sheet and uh, I th I'm really looking forward to working with this paper. I think it looks very promising and I hope you uh, got a little bit out of seeing me doing these tests. So yeah, I'm going to move on to drawing the drawing for the painting on the paper. So we're gonna see how well it st the paper stands up to uh, getting erased on a lot because I erase a lot when I draw. So see you then. Okay, so I'm going to draw a, a pretty simple portrait because that's what I'm familiar with and um, it's always a challenge either way, even though I've painted a lot of them, but I just didn't want to challenge myself too much on this because it's new paper and I'm here to see what the paper does for me. So I'm going to uh, be drawing a portrait with some stark lighting effects. Just a moment and I'll be ready to paint. So I'm going to start painting and I'm just gonna make a speed paint of this I think and then I'm gonna talk about my thoughts in the end of the video. So let's get on with the speed paint.
that's the final painting and of course it's not my best painting ever but I'm okay with it. It was really fun to work with this paper. I think I'm falling in love with it and that's great because you know I bought a lot of it so I really hope that I would like it. So I will see you in a little bit for the outro. Yeah, let's go. So we got this far and I've tested the paper and tried it out and I actually really like it. This is the final painting that I made. Um, it's not the best ever. <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm a little tired today and you can really tell on the painting that I was a little sloppy with the flowers. I'd like to have given them more detail and stuff like that. And I tried out some harsh lighting, but yeah, it kind of didn't work out. But that's not the paper's fault. The, paper's, the paper was absolutely fantastic to work with. So I'm really excited that I got this paper. So let's start by checking out the test that we made earlier. I'm sorry if I didn't hold it up high enough. So here's the painting, <laughs> if you didn't see before. And here's the test. So, um, first, wet on dry. Went on really smoothly. It's amazing that it, the color distributes so evenly on the paper, but I guess that's because it's hot pressed paper. Then we have wet on wet, where I discovered that they weren't, the blooms don't stay, so the texture of the paper makes the pigment lie too evenly for it to make the blooming texture that is, you know, signature for cold pressed watercolor paper. But I don't know if I'll miss it that much. I guess I will. I will probably use both hot pressed and cold pressed paper uh, depending on what I want, blooms or not, in my painting. Lifting uh, was okay when the, paper, when the paint was still damp, but when it dried it was really hard to lift. And I also struggled a bit with this on the painting because I usually lift a lot because I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> So I need this a lot, but I guess I'll just have to learn to be a little faster if I want to lift and make less mistakes that I lift after it dries. So, um, and the gradient into the white of the paper went really smoothly and the gradient into another color also went really smoothly. I messed it up a bit, so that's why it's a little bit uneven and that's my fault, it's not the paper, but it really was very smooth. Okay, so let's talk about when I painted the painting. At first I actually drew my pencil sketch on here and I noticed that the pencil was really smooth on the paper. Again, this is probably because it's hard pressed and of course the pencil would be smoother, so I shouldn't be surprised. But I was anyway, <laughs> and it was a pleasant surprise that you could draw without the bumpy texture of the that I'm used to from cold press paper. Um, then I discovered that the colors seem to be more vibrant than the paper than on the paper I usually use, which is a big bonus. I really love, you know, bright, strong colors. Did you hear that motorbike? I hate them. Okay, so I was saying. Um, I really like bold colors and I think it's easier to achieve on this paper. Also, it uh, layers really nicely. I, I found that I wasn't um, making the paper pill at all, even though I scrubbed and layered and was a little rough on the paper. It really held up really very well to my uh, treatment of it. So I'm excited about that because it's, it's great to be able to layer a lot more than I've been able to on my other paper. Then something that really surprised me was that the paper really does stay wet for a long time. <laughs> so I kept thinking that the paper was dry and then I'd put down a mark and the mark would you know feather out because the water the, the paper was still wet. So I really have to adjust my workflow to fit in that this paper really stays wet for a long time. And that's probably because it's 100% cotton. It was one of the things that I mentioned that, I, that it probably would do, stay wet longer. 
but I still it still surprised me how long and how weird it stayed. So it's it's great, but it's also a little bit difficult to get used to, I think. But we'll see. And then of course, you know, everything is super smooth on this paper and I really love it. Um, of course it can be hard to make a smooth edge. I made a smooth edge here on the top half of, of the face and then I failed on the bottom half. And that's just a question of my technique that isn't really that good yet. So I think I can get smooth transitions. Um, yeah, I can do that. Yes, I have it here. Anyway, that was a tangent. I really like this paper and I'm so happy I tried it out with you and I hope you found this sort of first impressions video useful and maybe if you're thinking about buying the paper or not I, I know that I like to watch people try out the, the things that I want to buy before I buy them so that I'll know which one to choose and yeah well now I tried this one these two pieces of paper I tried out and I had a really good experience with it and yeah so I'm looking forward to making many more works on this paper and if you want to follow me and see more art from me which is probably gonna be better than this hopefully um, please remember to subscribe and like the video and please comment down below if you have any questions or anything you want to see from me I love to talk with you down there so yeah Thank you so much for watching the video, I hope you have a really nice day and yeah, goodbye!